Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, part 51. Working on getting the engine to run using just the high pressure cylinder, but it doesn't feel good and the eccentric setting is a compromise for running in both directions. I connect the compound piping and see what happens. But first, here is the engine just running using the first cylinder, the high pressure cylinder. The timing is set correctly on the high pressure cylinder and unsurprisingly it runs very well. The only problem is the eccentrics on this engine are made in pairs so I cannot individually adjust each eccentric sheave to the position I need it to be in. The problem is the engine runs very well in one direction it doesn't seem to want to run in the other direction. When eccentric sheaves are made as pairs they have what's called the lead built in. What this means is the pair of eccentrics are not at exactly 180 degrees to each other. They are offset slightly so that the steam is admitted just before top dead centre. Running in the opposite direction was a complete failure so now I've wound the handle to the other end again. Little did I know how much fun this was going to be. It is definitely looking like I will be making some new eccentrics, all individually adjustable. When I slow the engine down you can hear that the beats are uneven, so this setting isn't right, but it has to be this way to make it so the other eccentric is in the approximate correct position as well. When I was putting this engine back together I very carefully adjusted the position of the intermediate cylinder's valve so that it was the same in forward and reverse. I have a sneaking suspicion that the eccentric sheaves that control the high pressure and low pressure cylinder are not machined correctly. I phoned Ronnie Mall, who's the man who built the other Stuart triple expansion engine that I have, and Ronnie said to me what I was actually thinking. He said, I don't bother doing it that way, I make them individually. Ronnie Mall is a man who definitely knows how to build these things and I thoroughly agree with him. That is also the way forward for me too. In this next clip the engine is running much better because I've connected the first of the link pipes. Exhaust from the high pressure cylinder to the inlet of the intermediate pressure cylinder. I'll stop talking for a while so you can have a listen. With the link to the intermediate cylinder fitted, there is a definite improvement. That's mainly because I really did take a lot of pains when I timed this. This was a temporary, simple jig that I made when I was timing the intermediate cylinder. So I know that the valve timing for this cylinder is correct at both ends. When I fitted the second pipe between the intermediate cylinder's exhaust and the inlet of the low pressure cylinder, the engine became much smoother and more powerful. When you think about it, the bore of the high pressure cylinder is only 3 quarters of an inch in diameter. That's the same size as a number 10. By using the steam or air three times, the engine is very powerful despite its size. If you look at the position of the die block in the expansion link in this clip, you will notice that I've notched back the engine by winding the reversing lever towards reverse which moves the expansion link less which in turn lets in less steam or in this case air into each of the cylinders. The theory behind this is it makes the engine more efficient as it uses less steam. It's a trade-off though because as you move towards reverse there is less power but it's often ideal when the engine's already running. There's a red cross coming up because you must not do what you see me doing here I'm oiling the engine whilst it's running at a high speed. If I catch the oil can in any of the moving parts at this speed, not only will the oil can be damaged, the working parts of the engine will be too. Time for a bit of slow motion.
The engine is beginning to run a bit smoother. The only problem is some of the parts are not fastened down properly yet. For instance, the crosshead guides are only secured at the top. And I'm sure something is going to tighten up when I secure them at the bottom as well. In this part of the clip, I'm rotating the hand wheel to move the valve gear to the other side to attempt to make the engine run in reverse. That is impossible, it just doesn't feel right, so I move the hand wheel back to the other direction. In the background, you can clearly see the other triple expansion engine that I have built by Ronnie Mall, which runs very well in both directions. There's quite a way to go yet. I haven't given up on these eccentric sheaves. I'm going to mess about with them, but I'll do it off camera because it's really difficult to do this job when I have to look at the camera all the time. At this moment though, I'm getting ready to make four more individually adjustable eccentric sheaves. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.